Number 64. The hydrolysis of the sugar sucrose, so the sugars glucose and fructose, is this balanced equation where we have the, we have the sucrose, which is C12H22O11 uh, plus H2O. That's a hydrolysis reaction, just adding water. And we get down to it a glucose and a fructose molecule, even though they both are C6H12O6, um, the structure differs by what they look like. If we actually drew out what a glucose is and what a fructose is, the difference will be in their structure. But anyway, this reaction follows a first order rate law for the disappearance of sucrose, in which the rate law is rate equals K times the concentration of the sucrose, which is C12H22O11. And they say the products of the reactants, glucose and fructose, have the same molecular formulas but differ in the arrangement of the atoms in their molecules. So what we were just discussing is that they just look different. But anyway, letter B. When a solution of sucrose with an initial concentration of 0.15 uh, molarity reaches equilibrium, the concentration of the sucrose is 1.65 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity. How long will it take the solution to reach this equilibrium at 27 degrees Celsius in the absence of a catalyst? And because the concentration of sucrose at equilibrium is so low, assume that the reaction is irreversible. So let's answer B before we go on to C. Now for B, they're asking how long will this solution take to reach equilibrium? Well, we know that we're starting off with, maybe what I'll say we'll do letter B here, we know that we have an initial C, what is it, C12H22O11, that's the sucrose. We know initially that we're starting off with a 0 0.150 molarity solution. And then as time goes on, right, as time passes, that concentration of the sucrose, C12H22O11, will now finally, or at, you know, at equilibrium, will reach a value of 1.65 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity. So that's a big drop. You're starting off at, I mean, relatively a low number, but you're dropping to essentially nothing. How long is this going to take? How long does it take for that sucrose to convert into glucose and fructose? That's what the question's asking for. So... I'm solving for a time value. So let's see, I start thinking of uh, formulas that has to deal with a general time that it takes a initial concentration to drop down to a final concentration. And they did preference this by talking about a rate law, right? They give us a rate law. So we are in the realm of kinetics. Um, and we know by what they told us that this was first order. So I said, oh, I know an integrated rate law that has to deal with first order. And that's this one right here. Oh yeah, the first order integrated rate law where we have natural logs going up in here, but it's LN of your concentration. I just put it in brackets, right? Uh, as, as anybody. And in this case, it's going to be the sucrose. But this, without that notch, this is your final concentration. And the one that has the notch in it is the initial concentration. So we know those values, right? Finally, we're going to end up with 1.65 times 10 to the negative seventh and an initial concentration of 0 0.150. Okay? Natural logs are on the calculator, so that's all good. We're trying to solve for the T, that that's the time. So we're gonna say that that's X. And the only thing here is that we need a K value and the K value is the rate constant. Now, in part A of this question, it did state that the K value at 27 degrees Celsius and that's what the temp we're at. So I know in part A that there was a couple of different uh, rate constant values, different K values. We had to pick the right one. The, to uh, the temperatures have to match. So in this case, the rate constant that we're going to use is the 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th and per second. Now, since I have everything good to go, let's solve, right? So maybe what I'll do is we will push this over to the side. And I think I could fit everything in. Let's see. 
ln of, we got 1.65 times 10 to the negative seventh, that goes here, equals, the negative is in the formula, so it's the negative k value, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th times by that time, so I'll just say that that's x, plus ln of the initial concentration, which is 0 0.150. Okay, so what we can do here is we could just simplify our natural logs. We can do the ln of 1.65 times 10 to the negative seventh. So I'm just gonna say ln 1.65, second comma, that means times 10 to the negative seventh. Voila, we have negative 15.62, I'll put it down. Um, just, you know, writing it out, but while I'm doing my calculations, I will take the full number. So this equals negative 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th times x. And now let's get that second ln value. So calc time, ln of 0.15. There we go. And it now turns into a negative value. So minus 1.897, sure. Got to get x by itself, so I'm going to add 1.897 on over, but when I do the actual math, I will take the whole number that's on calci because we should only round at the end. So this goes bye-bye. We are now equal to negative uh, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11. That's still times by x. And then let's just do this math. We have the negative 15 value plus... So maybe we'll do, I guess we'll, we'll minus this number, right? Which is essentially plus. I just don't want to write all these values again. Uh, could be, you know, an error in my part. But you could say, you know, this, this 15 value plus 1.89711985. And let's press enter. And there we go. So we get negative 13.72. And now just solve for x right? Divide on both sides by that negative value, negative 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th. Negative 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th. This goes bye-bye. And maybe what I can is I'll pull this value a little bit over this way just so that I have, and maybe we'll pull it up a little bit. Whee! Okay. X equals... Uh, we'll take this whole number and then divide it by the negative 2.1 times 10 to the negative 11th. That looks good on my part. Press enter. Okay. A lot of seconds. Six point, I guess we'll do 6.5. That's good enough. 6.5 times 10 to the... Uh, 11th. Now just know that your time and your units for your k value have the same unit for time. So since the k value was in seconds, or per second, this is going to be seconds. So 8.5 times 10 to the 11th seconds? That's a lot of seconds. Uh, it didn't specifically say, you know, how long is this going to take in hours or in minutes. So technically this answer is good to go. But just to kind of do the, um, the math here, if you wanted to find it out in minutes, you just divide by 60. So it'd be, I mean, still a lot. One times 10 to the 10th minutes. And then if you want to find out how many hours that is, you divide it again by 60. And we're looking at, oh boy, 1.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 1.8 times 10 to the 8th hours. So either or, you're still good to go. And that is the answer for B. Check that off. I don't like that blue check. I like the black checks, that looks better, okay. <laughs> but now, last one, letter C, it says, why does assuming that the reaction is irreversible simplify the calculation in part B? So why did we have to say that this was irreversible to solve for that uh, that time value. Well, if something is irreversible, that means that you're only going in one direction. Generally, if you do say that you are at equilibrium, 
you have a, a, a rate in which the forward reaction is the same as the reverse. But if we are basically saying that this is irreversible, that means that your sucrose is just going to keep breaking down into that specific number. We do not have to account for uh, added time in which your products will go back to your reactants, right? That would be a pure equilibrium where you have the forward and the reverse rate uh, being the same. But in this case, since we are uh, assuming that the reaction is irreversible, that just means that we are basically saying that there is no new reactants being made. And because of that, right, because it's only one arrow, not the equilibrium arrow that we have seen in the equilibrium chapter. Um, and because of that, you don't have to add any more time on there to account for how much time it took to make more sucrose. And then because of that, you have more time that goes, you know, back to the products. So in this case, since we're saying that's irreversible, it's just going one direction. No new reactants are being made. So you don't have to, you know, take into consideration that extra time. And that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I try to get back to you as much as I can in my free time. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. And I'm really glad that, you know, you guys can trust us. My brother and I, we, we thank you so much that you guys are coming here, watching the videos, and doing well on your tests and quizzes. And that's all that we want for you guys. We want you guys to do really well in your exams and, and school in general. Um, free education for all. So, thanks. <laughs> I will, um, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. I hope you have a great day and yeah, talk to you then. Bye-bye.